Evolutionists and old earth advocates would have us believe that canyons such as the Grand Canyon take millions of years to form. You may be familiar with one of their stories. The Colorado River started carving slowly through layers of volcanic rock and sediment between five and six million years ago. In other words, it takes millions of years to form the sedimentary layers and a little water over eons to carve such great valleys. Well, we're here in Stewart County in the far southwest corner of the beautiful state of Georgia. And we're here to take a closer look at one of the state's incredible seven wonders. Welcome to Providence Canyon State Park, also known as Georgia's Little Grand Canyon. What we think you'll find most interesting is that this canyon wasn't here 170 years ago. Where there were once rolling hills covered with untouched pine forests, there's now a deep gorge with nine finger-like canyons. These canyons, they range in size up to 160 feet deep, 600 feet wide, and one even at 1,300 feet long. So what happened? How did this spectacular canyon form? I'm pretty confident you would see an interpretive sign explaining a canyon formation over millions of years if there wasn't an eyewitness record of history. It turns out that from the 1820s onward, it was the clear felling of trees to grow crops such as cotton and corn, which set the scene for the start of catastrophic erosion. The land was exposed to the ravages of water runoff during the area's frequent heavy thunderstorms. Historical records show that the local Providence United Methodist Church opened in 1832. It had to be relocated in 1859 because of the danger of being undermined by the growing canyon. In the 1940s, farmers had to watch every little ditch in case it turned into another gully. They said the soil it melted like sugar and ran like water. Each year, most farmers lost some animals and farm equipment over the canyon rim. Once anything went over, it was abandoned because recovery, well, it was extremely difficult. Locals, they spoke of lying in bed on cold winter nights during heavy rain. They would hear bangs that sounded like cannon fire as big chunks of earth fell from the steep sided walls of the canyon. Measurements taken between 1984 and 1994 confirm that the canyon is still growing, mainly in width. Even now, fences are often relocated and roads are rerouted because of these changes. Providence Canyon is a real-life, small-scale laboratory and it helps us understand some of the processes that occurred on a much larger scale during Noah's flood recorded in the Bible. As floodwaters drained off the continents, erosion after the global flood, it would have been exceptionally rapid through the still soft, freshly laid sediments. It doesn't take millions of years for vast canyons to form, as we see here in Providence Canyon. It just takes the right conditions. If nobody witnessed the formation of this canyon, hardly anyone would have believed it. Similar to the eyewitness account of the formation of Providence Canyon, we have a historical record, an eyewitness account of history from the very beginning, the Word of God, written by the one who was there, the Creator Jesus Christ. We can trust those early events, creation, the fall, the flood, the Tower of Babel, all as real recorded history found on a biblical timeline and confirmed by science. Providence Canyon demonstrates that when Christians bring the worldwide flood back into their thinking, a large percentage of the secular uniformitarian time challenges melt away. We can illustrate how the geology of the earth is consistent with the catastrophic globe-covering flood 
as mentioned in the Bible and on a short time scale, provided we understand the conditions correctly. We encourage you to take a closer look at the evidence for yourself and you will find that what we see in God's world confirms what we read in God's Word.